Thank you, Setup, for sponsoring today's video. Bro, Command C, Command V. Command shift and jump to create a folder. Yo, Jesus. What the f? Just... Snap to grid. But like, huh. <laughs> you, you, how do you cut? Command X. What about like expanding? Option click the little arrow. I so. Yo, how to do the apps thing? Four fingers. Where do I find the C dot dot thing? Check out the terminal. Okay, so out of all the MacBooks we've reviewed, the M2 Air seems to be the most popular one. Like literally so many of you guys seem to rather buy this over the M1 M2 Pro. And I mean, I can't blame you. It's definitely an amazing laptop. So you know what? Last week I was wondering, how do I make your purchases even better? And so I thought of making a beginner's video on how to set up your new MacBook, guide you through the apps I like installing, how to make Finder better, give you guys some advanced tips and tricks, as well as a quick preview of the terminal. I felt like the newcomers, the people with new purchases with current MacBooks and so on, would enjoy a video like this one from someone that I guess knows its way pretty well around Mac. So it's no secret that Mac OS is super easy to navigate. The hello screen when you first boot this thing is all about choosing your language, picking your location, adapting your Mac to your individual needs if you have a difficulty with your hearing, vision, motor skills. It's overall a very easy process from entering your Wi-Fi information to migrating your information if you do come from another Mac. And backing things up is something I heavily recommend doing. In the studio, we have SSD drives that back up MacBooks for coding and MacBooks for content creation. And if I was to connect one of these and click continue, other than making sure my power adapter is connected, you need to make sure you click on the right backup drive and continue with the process. But I know most of you probably don't have one, so you'll need to skip this step for now. At the end, I'll show you how to back up your data. From here, you either sign up with your Apple ID or you can just create one. Go through the terms and conditions, which then prompts you to creating a computer account. Just give it a cool icon and I always recommend to keep these account names simple with a strong password though. Please do make sure to check the allow my Apple ID to reset this password box or else if you do ever end up forgetting your password, getting into this MacBook again will be near impossible. So please check that. From here on a new Mac with a new account, you move on to an amazing feature called Find My. In the event that your Mac gets lost or stolen, you can either go on your iPhone app or within your iCloud.com account to simply track your device. But because my account is connected to various Macs, it saves some of my preferences to save time when I set up any new MacBook. So on my end, I recommend to enable location services. I also don't really like sharing too much information like the analytics. Screen time is another cool feature. I don't use it, but it may be good for you if you want to limit your screen time. There's also Siri, which I always disable. Siri is like Alexa or Hey Google. So for me, it can get a bit annoying. So I just disable it. To finish the setup, you definitely need to turn on File Vault Disk Encryption. It just allows you to protect your disk with a, an additional password that can be decrypted via iCloud. And then at last, Touch ID. It's a must because instead of unlocking your MacBook with your password, you can simply just use your fingerprint ID. Apple Pay also uses Touch ID and other features like accessing your safe passwords, checking some settings, buying an app on the App Store, and whatnot. To be honest, I only have Apple Pay on my iPhone, not my Macs, and I also have the dark theme on at all times and not automatically. But look, before we even start making things look awesome and accessible, in order to keep up with me, you might need to update your MacBook to macOS Ventura. 
Let me show you on the M1 Pro how to do it. Here's a little shortcut you can use. Press Command Space, type Update within Spotlight, and then press Enter to choose the first option. Uncheck the Auto Update box. We don't want things to automatically update because sometimes updates can cause bugs and so on. You then click Upgrade Now, and it might ask you to read some terms and conditions or for your password. This takes a bit of time to download, but depending on your current OS, things might look different when it comes to installing Ventura. Once Ventura is installed in your machine, go to System Settings, click the General tab, go to Software Update, click the little icon, and check this security box. It ensures you get automatic security updates on the go. Now, Mac OS is fantastic. The first thing I like doing is customizing it to make it feel seamless. A lot of it is done within the system settings. For me, a good place to start is with an appearance. And what I like doing is changing the theme to dark mode, switching my accent colors to orange, and sidebar icons to small. Then before removing all the apps that currently exist on the dock, what I like doing is modifying its looks and behavior. If you click on option and then the dock separator, you can actually access its settings. You'll see how system preferences will jump right straight to the dock settings tab. This is where you will find all the cool things you can do with the dock. But all I like doing is changing its size, the magnification once your mouse hovers on it, and disabling show recent applications in dock. I don't like that feature, it just tends to clutter your dock workflow quite a lot, which is why I also started checking the minimize windows into application icon checkbox. I prefer to have them minimized within their corresponding icons and not on the side. I also don't really like changing its position because I think it looks great there. Although if you scroll down a bit more, you can change your menu bar behavior as well as the behavior of your windows and apps. This year, Apple introduced Stage Manager, a feature that can be accessed within Control Center. Just recently, I modified it to fit my needs, like avoid always showing recent applications and showing desktop items at all times. If you approach the cursor towards the edge of the screen, your window manager will pop. It's a cool feature because it really allows you to organize workflows and keep certain apps together. But look, I'll leave you guys with a really nice tutorial regarding Stage Manager in the description down below. And so the last setting I like tweaking within this section has to do with mission control. If you take three fingers and slide up on the trackpad, you will reveal all your open windows desktop spaces, and any apps in full screen or split view. Feel free to change some of that behavior here, but I like grouping my windows by application. I also like going to wallpaper and changing it to something that matches more my style. My current wallpapers live within my home server, and I use Finder to navigate to them. Also, within this place, in order to gain a bit more screen real estate, I like using the more space option when it comes to text. I leave True Tone on when I'm not doing any design work and I uncheck automatically adjust brightness. I like adjusting the brightness myself when I need it. I also like adjusting my sound and my Bluetooth peripherals with one click. So what I like doing is bringing these to the menu bar. To do this, go to the control center tab. There, you will be able to display all the icons you wish to display within the menu bar. This makes certain things super accessible and easy to locate. Next, scrolling down will also allow you to enable battery percentage. And scrolling all the way up to network will allow you to activate the firewall. Apparently, it's disabled by default because it makes it easier to set up connections with other Apple devices. However, if for some reason you find yourself hopping onto untrusted networks often, I recommend you enable this. Another feature I heavily recommend enabling is setting snapping icons to grid by default. Just open Finder with Command N, click on the desktop tab, right click anywhere in a folder, click on show view options, and then snap to grid within the sort by menu list. However, to make sure it works everywhere in the OS, you need to do this within the actual desktop and click use as defaults. The desktop is where I also typically like to arrange my files by using stacks. From here, I usually remove all the unwanted apps from my dock and organize the apps living in my launch pad. I like revealing my launchpad by either clicking on the app icon or by using the multi-touch gesture. 
But before doing so, I make sure I download the apps I typically need on this machine. Things like Chrome, Brave, the Microsoft Office Suite, Notion, Xcode, Clean My Mac, VS Code, High Term 2. I could literally go on forever. By the way, most of the time my installing apps on macOS can range from a simple drag and drop within a mounted virtual drive, or also just drag the application to the app folder to a very similar Microsoft Windows-like installation process. There are of course also other helper apps you can download within the App Store, and for my Macs, I like using all kinds of apps to help me out. Apps that allow for me to solve my day-to-day -day tasks more efficiently. And a great example of that would be Paste. This is pretty much a clipboard manager that allows you to keep search and organize everything you copy on your Mac. Another one would be iStat Menu, a powerful monitoring system app for macOS that lives in your menu bar. It allows you to pretty much access at a glance some stats, graphs, states, and speeds regarding your CPU, disk, network, and so on. And my favorite one, CleanShot, an app that you can use to screen record your MacBook for any sort of tasks you want to record and take screenshots of its contents. It's actually powerful, especially because you can do things like add a green screen to a video, capture elements of your OS as a PNG image, annotate, and so on. This is the fun part of macOS, that it really allows you to install these type of apps to enhance your whole experience. And the coolest part is that for me, those apps are also all part of Setup, and that's why I wanted them to sponsor this video. With one sign up to their platform, you have access to over 230 trustworthy advanced functionality paid apps. Whether it's for video editing, coding, writing or designing, there's always a bunch of apps to power you up as a professional. They have a dashboard where they present you with recommended apps based on your Mac activity and also deliver new arrivals, which they keep constantly adding. After your weekly trial, with one free per month, you have access to hundreds of apps that otherwise cost much more on their own. And so this can make your brand new MacBook a lot easier to set up based on what you do within your everyday life. With more and more premium apps and features being added on a regular basis, Setup can really be your one-stop app solution for many years to come. Try it for free for seven days today by clicking the link in the description down below. And I'll also leave down below a list of my favorite helper apps like Monitor Control that allows you to control the volume and brightness of your external monitor, Downy that also allows you to download YouTube videos in full res, or even Gestimer that allows you to set times by dragging the menu bar icon onto their desktop. Regardless of what I use, after the bulk of my apps are installed, I then proceed to organize my launchpad, which just means sorting apps within folders by dragging the apps I wish to put together. Oh, and if for some reason one of these applications ever crashes on you, you can terminate it by either holding down Command Option Escape or by simply right clicking the app on the dock, hold down Option and click Force Quit. To completely uninstall apps, you can either use something like Clean My Mac or uninstall them yourself properly. And properly means going into Finder, navigate to Applications, search for the app you want to remove and filter that search, meaning that we need to find all the related junk that relates to this app in order to make sure all the files that this application generates disappears. Basically, you want to search within this Mac, click on the plus sign and create a named filter that matches your app name as well as another system files filter that are included. You can then just press Command A to select all of them, Command Delete to delete everything, and Command Shift Delete to empty your garbage. You'll see within Finder that your trash folder will be fully empty. As for Finder, it's a whole world by itself and it's very powerful if you set it up to your advantage. First, under View, enable your Path Bar and also enable the Status Bar. So when you navigate Finder, you know in what folder you currently are and how much space you have left in the system along the number of files in that folder. Now, under Finder settings, I do suggest you set up your root view to be your username. This allows you to have a global view of all your file folders when you first launch Finder, a place where I also create my developer folder, of course. I also uncheck the open folders in tabs instead of new windows. And to enhance my navigation, I completely modify my sidebar. So I like keeping the ones I use the most and sort them by most useful to less useful. Basically, rearrange the whole sidebar to make things easy for me. This also includes dragging my newly created 
developer folder. And in advanced settings, I made sure my search only search within the current folder and not the whole Mac. Within Finder, you can also do things like right click on a file, hold down option and give it a default app to always open this file with. If you wish to set an application like Adobe Acrobat to open all documents like this one, you need to right click on the file, go to get info, click the open with tab, choose the app and click change all. If you wish to make a quick copy, you can hold down option and drag it to the work area. You can also select multiple files at once with command. Command A will choose all the files in the working directory. And if you change your views to list, you can use shift to select a range of files within a starting point. Note that views is a really good way of filtering files by size, kind, date, and name. Also holding down option and clicking on the arrows can expand all the child folders within that folder. And while we are on the topic of folders, instead of right clicking and creating a folder, you can always just use shift command end. You can also use control command N to insert a group of selected files in a newly created folder. Remember that command C and command V are the equivalent of control C and control V for copy and paste in windows. And if for some reason your finder window is closed, you can also use option command space to search something directly within finder. Search can also be done within spotlight command space. Basically, this here is a tool that helps you search files and other type of content. This time around, it's very powerful because once you query a term, you can press spacebar to see a preview of that result. If you go within your system settings under Siri and Spotlight, you will find all the search results that can pop up when using Spotlight. So depending on the term you query, your search results may include web pages, apps and files, messages, images, emails, contacts, and so on. I like having some of them disabled like contacts, mails and messages, my reminders, and even Siri suggestions. Now, if you want that even more powerful spotlight tool, you can always just use Alfred. When it comes to the trackpad, you can change a few things to make your usability better. If you go to system settings and trackpad, you can change a bunch of settings. On my end, I like the tracking speed to be a bit faster so I can take advantage of the full trackpad as much as I can. And I like to keep my clicks at a medium force. The three taps here reveal some of the additional things you can do and remember right clicking on a Mac can be done with two fingers but this can be changed in settings if you prefer to click the bottom right corner instead. Within the accessibility tab under pointer control you can also change a few other things. Now in terms of advanced tips and tricks I've got a few I use myself. Accessibility zoom is a great one to start with. This can be toggled by checking the scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. All you need to do is hold down control and slide two fingers to zoom into things. Another cool feature for creating PDFs out of images quickly is using the command shortcut I showed you before. Select a few images you wish to have within your PDF, right click, quick actions and create a PDF. There's also the new font book that can be searched within Spotlight. Fontbook is a place where you can now install native fonts being delivered by Apple themselves. However, if you want your own custom fonts, you can either drag them as a sole file or a folder into your fonts, or just like install them by opening them up. Also, if you ever wish to record your screen phone for a demo presentation on say, an iOS app you've coded, you can simply connect the phone to the MacBook, allow the accessory, trust the device, open QuickTime, file, new movie recording, and choose your iPhone screen. This makes it super easy to present pretty much anything even within a call. Sometimes you'll notice that it will try to grab continuity camera as part of your recording. That's another feature that's pretty cool within macOS. You can now use your iPhone camera as your webcam and control it via control center, all without the need of this cable. Another cool setting that allows you to work efficiently is being able to close all your app related windows at once. Just hold down option and click the red button to close it all. I also suggest that if you do end up using Safari, you go within its settings and you uncheck the open save files after downloading box. Just like I also recommend setting up a second touch ID within your system settings. Touch ID is powerful and saves lots of time when needed. It's also worth checking out what hot corners can do for you within the desktop and dock tab. Your screen has four corners and poking your mouse on them can allow you to trigger certain tasks. For example, 
creating a quick note or things like your desktop, launchpad, notification center, where you can send the new weather notifications from the newly updated weather app. I just enabled this myself, but to do this, you need to go into the weather app, click weather, settings and turn on the relevant weather alerts for multiple locations. Alas, if you ever have issues with permissions, just head to the privacy and security tab in order to grant apps certain permissions within your system. For example, if Chrome can't access your mic, you can tweak that in there. To finish this video off the terminal, this is a super advanced topic for beginners, but it's important you guys know that it exists. Mac OS is a Unix OS and its command line is very, very similar compared to any Linux distribution. So if you come from Linux, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. A shell is a simple program that takes commands on behalf of the operating system, and it's the outermost layer around the OS. Bash and CSH are two shells that run on terminal. I'd rather use iTerm2 because it's more customizable and nicer to use, but all you need to know is that it's like a very powerful and advanced finder. A place you can install tools, clone repos, traverse your file structure, and much more. And to be honest, as a beginner, the only commands that can help you in the future would be the following ones. LS reveals your current directory. LS flag L reveals your current directory with permissions and more. LS flag A reveals your current directory with hidden files. PWD prints your current working directory, aka where you are. CD allows you to fall into your home directory. CD with a path name allows you to travel to different folders. CD dot dot allows you to jump back one directory. CD slash allows you to dive into the root directory. MKDIR along a name is a great way of creating folders. Touch along another name can create files. Cat along a file name can quickly reveal what's in that file. The RM command can delete files. And the RMDIR command can delete folders. However, if they are not empty, use the recursive RM flag R function to delete everything inside. Clear just clears your current terminal. There's an incredible amount of things to learn within Terminal, and I will link one of the best tutorials out there down below if it's of any interest to you. Once you've got everything going, get yourself a drive big enough to be able to back up your data. With command space, you can search for a time machine, click on it, and add a backup disk. Choose the disk you wish to use, and it will automatically back up your data for you to keep safely. There's so much to learn within the macOS ecosystem. These are only some of the things I've been using or I currently use and things that I've just learned recently. The way I set up things varies from year to year, but this is how I've been doing things for the past few months. I hope it was a helpful video and allows you to quickly learn a lot about macOS in such a short period of time. I'm sure it'll make your workflow better and I invite you guys to keep on learning some more. Leave a hashtag M2 if you made it till the end of the video. I'm signing out guys, take care. Thank you